That's just to remember the lawful immigrant is entitled to all of this. This is what we like to encourage all people coming into this country with safety, respect, and dignity. They can have all this. You know, no one's going to question them. No one's going to ask them to go home or anything like that. The lawful immigrant, from what all of you have applied, having an immigrant here, is an essential part of this country. And they deserve these benefits. It is the unlawful person who chose to come to this country unlawfully that is taking away these resources from the people that need them. These resources just don't go on forever and ever. There is a limit. And it is right for refugees. It is right for those of legal presence. It is right for the citizens to have these entitlements. And one, one, additional, one additional thing. Anybody and everybody in this audience is free to help out any person they want, legal or illegal. Just don't take my taxpayer dollars to do it. Yeah, as we all know, Jesus never held out, uh, held out with uh, criminals and tax collectors and prosecutors. Um, you know, I, I, this argument seems on its face absurd. I mean, you know, it was Jesus' personal choice to flout the Pharisees and Roman law. I mean, where does this lead? Uh, I mean, if you're going to call, call this a Christian nation, then a basic understanding that as a matter of fact, Jesus Christ was murdered for preaching the good news against the Romans and the Pharisees seems like a pretty big deal to me, at least. <laughs> um, additionally, you know, Eli, I find it hard to believe that you, that you really are worried about these immigrants that come here even legally. All the, most of the Somalis here in Utah are refugees from a war. They did come here legally, and yet you say things like, I don't want to grow up in Somalia. I don't want to grow up in Mexico. Tom Tancredo, who was a former congressman, and one of the main spokesmen for the anti-immigrant movement, he's come out and very clearly said, we need to limit immigration, both legal and illegal, because we don't want to lose our nation. It will be destroyed from both legal and illegal immigration. And the reason is, because he wants a country for white people. Because that was directed personally at you, I think it's only fair to give you 30 seconds to respond. If you'd like. <laughs> Any nation can require, as a condition of its nationhood, for people to assimilate into it. That means you can't bring your customs, your language, your social practices, your expectations, and force them through sheer numbers onto another nation. It's called assimilation. And by the way, my wife is an immigrant. She has done exactly the right thing. <laughs> the last question is a question from the Utah Midland Project to United for Social Justice. What would you do to encourage people to immigrate to a nation with dignity, respect, and safety? Well, I mean, again, this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about, uh, I certainly, again, I, I want to make my position, our political position clear. We have no problem with immigrants uh, coming here, right? We do not want to get rid of the pull factors, and we're certainly comfortable with people coming here uh, and by legalizing them. They don't have to go through the cartels. They don't have to be, live in fear and in the shadows. But also, that's not sufficient. Uh, contrary to uh, what Mr. Kelly would say, I don't think the United States is the source of all evil in the world. But they've got a pretty strong argument in Latin America. Guzman in Guatemala, Pinochet in Chile, Operation Condor, which was all throughout the uh, Latin American cone, uh, the inter uh, Parachines uh, intervention, into Mexico, NAFTA, etc. So I'm not necessarily saying the United States has a responsibility to say uh, for the Sudanis. I think it's certainly uh, admirable that they would bring the Sudanis in. But also, these are not facts that can be whitewashed and say, well, we're not really responsible. Uh, there's 100,000 dead Chileans that say that we are. 
So that being said, one of the best ways to protect the United States, or if you really don't want immigration here, stop screwing up other countries. Stop destroying our economy. Stop overthrowing our governments. And you'll find that by and large, people like to hang out where they're born, with their family, with their culture, and with people who uh, share similar language and customs. This is important why we have to have legal immigration and legalized uh, guest worker programs. We want to oversee these programs so there's none of these uh, atrocities and committed to them. Because I've read information where human trafficking and legal immigration uh, from guest worker programs, they're almost the same, the atrocities that happen to these people. And this is what we've got to have. There's plans out there that call for disposable workers, such as in Japan and Korea. That's their, their plan. They only want workers in here and then get rid of them, so to speak, when we're done using them. That's a disposable worker program. There's also a servant pro Serbian program. Again, made to exploit poor people. And I think this is some common ground that, that we can get, is the fact that we need to protect these people as they come in. And legalization is that process. It's time for a question and answer series. Uh, if people were to ask questions, raise your hand. We're going to try to alternate between people who are going to ask questions, perhaps favorable to the Utah Internet Project, and people who want to ask questions favorable to United for Social Justice. We're going to have two, two lines. Hey, the side close is going, yes. Uh, okay. uh, my question is, I wrote it down so I don't turn on. Uh, while Will and Greg have done immense amounts of sociological research for this debate, the Minuteman Project has made several claims about undocumented workers, which could be, in principle, empirically validated. So my question is, where are you getting the facts to support your claims? Did you read it in a book? Or are you sure that it wasn't nothing? <laughs> Your claims were that undocumented workers, uh, for instance, come here to crimes, they contribute to organized crimes. These are, uh, again, sociological facts that could be researched and appear to validate it. So, with the research. Yeah, let me, let me respond to that. If you work in this country and you're an illegal alien, you're committing a crime. That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> if you steal identities from somebody or you purchase documents that are illegal, that's a crime. If you do not report truthfully on a 99 form who you are and, and, and so forth, that's a crime. If you use a, an incorrect ID to get welfare uh, payments of, or uh, assistance of whatever nature, that's a crime. And furthermore, I would say that people like, many people operate under the same illusions that you just evinced. That these people are here, they're innocent, they're not doing anything wrong, when in fact they are breaking the law every single day. And it's not acknowledged, it's not recognized, but nonetheless, it's a fact. Thank you. 